Hello, everybody. It's nice to uh, be invited in um, Indian Society of Pediatric Neurosurgery meeting. It's an honor for me. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to share our information from Nepal to India and India to Nepal. So I would like to talk about the um, small information that we have on listening, uh, because there's very few centers which is doing listening these days. And uh, But unfortunately, we have done very little uh, cases on pediatric, but the technique should be same. The only difference would be that uh, the pediatric uh, population will have to be uh, in anesthetic uh, situation, so you you cannot monitor intraoperatively. So that should be the only difference that you'll face uh, during an adult and uh, a pediatric population. This is our team, and uh, this is uh, Aresa Srest and uh, Pritam Guru. These are the young colleagues who are taking up uh, functional neurosurgery and our biomed engineers who are very crucial in the uh, you know, in, in our team for this. And uh, this is Professor Thaira. We believe that we uh, learn from the best people. Uh, this is the motto of our institute, institute and we improve on whatever we have learned. And then our responsibility would be to hand it over to the next generation. And that is the principle that we have been following. And we are fortunate to learn from the one of the best uh, teacher of uh, functional neurosurgery in the world. Uh, this is, uh, we also do a lot of collaboration and uh, I'm very thankful to Vipin Tiagi and his team who have been coming to Nepal all the time, although it's, it's his business, but then uh, he has gone beyond business and, uh, you know, he, without his support, his team's support, would not have been able to bring it to this level. So we are really thankful to Bipin and his team. And uh, also we have uh, the Chinese colleagues uh, who come from, because we are using Sinre, the Chinese also comes to, you know, help us. Now we don't need, uh, we are doing on our own most of the surgeries, but um, you know, and uh, geographically also Nepal is between uh, China and India. So we are very happy to work with our colleagues. Um, uh, about total neurosurgical cases we do in a year is about 1700. Out of that 5% is functional neurosurgery, I do, uh, which uh, is 2% uh, is about epilepsy surgery and another 3% is about uh, movement disorder and other kind of surgeries. So functional neurosurgery, we started gradually, and then we started for epilepsy surgery 2002. For spasticity on children, we did selective neurectomy and selective dorsal rhizotomy. Uh, but uh, we have stopped this uh, SDR now because there's a lot of recurrence in this case. For a few years, they are really good, but then after that, there's a lot of recurrence in them. And movement disorder, we started from 2005, DBS 2015. And for psychosurgery, we started from obsessive compulsive disorder 2020. And now our next target is to operate on drug addiction and uh, drug resistant depression. And this is our first case of listening and um, which is in 2005. The frame is a Kumai frame and we are using a self-made uh, monopolar cautery probe and um, we did about eight cases at that time. And then we thought that we need to have a better equipment to start it. So we waited for some time. And this is how we did at that time. Uh, this is uh, a ventriculography and uh, CT ventriculography, you know, guided surgery. And uh, we simulated uh, our probe on the egg and to see that we are always making the same size lesion. And this is how we were measuring uh, the BOA, BOP and beam junctions, you know. Um, as we all know, you know, lesioning was pretty popular before the introduction of Libodopa, but once Libodopa was introduced, you know, people stopped doing lesioning. And then, you know, again, DBS started uh, uh, coming into the scene but since 1990, again, GPI listening has been reintroduced. And um, 
um, especially recently with the EMR guided, you know, focal ultrasound lesion. Again, people are uh, going back to lesioning, and uh, otherwise, most of the country are still doing uh, deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation for me is a misnomer, you know, because there's you are not stimulating anything. You are actually deep brain suppressing. You are creating an electrical a buffer where you know electrical signals don't pass. So actually, it's not a stimulation. But if you say you know deep brain suppressor, then I think nobody will uh, use it. So that's why to make it catchy, maybe it's say deep brain stimulator. So whatever technique you use, you are trying to de defunction that area. The only thing is listening it cannot be reversed, whereas uh, DBS can be reversed. Uh, surgically correctable movement disorder, we are treating Parkinson's disease with lesioning, dystonia, generalized focal task specific, drug-induced, uh, spasmodic torticollis, essential tumors, Huntington's chorea. And um, if we have a correct case, uh, we can do uh, to, for Tourette syndrome also, we can operate, but we don't have a appropriate case till now. And to work in a country like this, you have to improvise a lot. Like we are also doing training now, pacing and other kind of pacings. And uh, if you like uh, every breathing pacemaker, it's about $100,000. But um, with this uh, spinal stimulator and on and off cycle, we you know reprogram and we could put uh, very simply on uh, cheaper $13,000. Now we are thinking of you know rehacking the cardiac pacemaker uh, to use on different type of pacing system, which is uh, possible. And uh, for listening, um, we are using 0 0.75 millimeter diameter, two millimeter, three millimeter probes, exposed tips, and also a bigger uh, probe for functional, uh, this uh, psychosurgery, uh, two millimeter, five millimeter exposed tips. And um, uh, we make test lesioning first by 50 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. And if there's not no adverse effect, then we go for 75 degrees Celsius for 70. Here I am, uh, you know, in one of the surgery, our probe uh, was damaged. So I repicked the old probe uh, from the store. And then, you know, during the surgery, we could again, you know, use the monopolar and make uh, the country. So you have to improvise, you know. Uh, you cannot only depend on the engineers. You have to learn these techniques on your own. Um, for PD selection, we uh, look at the moderate, uh, uh, moderate to advanced PD. Uh, we prefer is less than 75, but then, you know, preferably 70. But, you know, we have done older people's also, depends on biological age and comorbid status. Uh, motor symptoms should be responsive to labor dopa, so they are labor dopa responders. A clear on-off cycle is the best approach, and uh, only mild cognitive impairment should be there, and absence or well-controlled psychiatric disease. And uh, labor dopa-induced uh, dyskinetic patients are the best uh, candidates. And uh, this is our workflow. We take our uh, MRI 3D volume without a frame first. And then we, with the frame, we take a one millimeter cut CT, fuse the CT and the MRI and determine the ACPC line, determine the target, verify with ATLAS and uh, uh, mark the entry point and uh, simulate the trajectory so that you know it doesn't go into the ventricle or it does not go through the sulcus, but it goes through the um, the gyra, you know, and there is no vessels in between. So we are using JD Fisher frame. And the ACPC line, one note is that this is a recently published paper from our institute. ACPC line is totally different from country to country, ethnicity to ethnicity. Nepalese have a similar ACPC diameter with the Asian population. If it's a Caucasian, the ACPC is longer and shorter in Hispanic. So this has to be, you know, this thing has to be considered. And then for accuracy and safety, all listenings are done on awake surgery unless it's a pediatric uh, patient. And um, uh, we do first a phantom si stimulation, simulation, 
where we see that uh, we are the, the target that we are trying to reach is on place. And then we do a micro electrode recording, which uh, we sometimes omit in GPI listening, but we invariably do in DBS, a CM verification. And then we do a micro stimulation of 150 Hertz and um, for 2.5 microvolt. And then we do a test and permanent lasering, as I just told you. So in during awake surgery, we do an interoperative assessment all the time. We check for motor, sensory, speech, visual, spasticity, uh, and the degree of the tremors. For GPI, we take two trajectory, primary and secondary. We do about five to seven uh, lesions in tandem. And as I have said, first we do a test lesion, and then we do a, a permanent lesion. So this is the GI, uh, GPI target, and this is the coordinates, uh, axial and coronal. And uh, as you can see, this is how uh, you can see. And we, this is bilateral, you know, and we try to go as low as possible. Most of the time we go three millimeter beyond the target. And uh, we check for the eye symptoms because optic nerve is pretty close. And if there's no, then we uh, try to make lesion from uh, distal to proximal. And when we are doing bilateral, uh, there's a possibility of degultation problem. So, uh, you know, the, the secondary target, secondary site, we make less lesions uh, tailored on how they are swallowing during intraoperatively, you know. So we give them something to drink. Uh, this is uh, the patient to uh, Parkinson's patients, bilateral lesioning. And this is uh, 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 post ops is, you know, pretty good. So without any uh, device, we can create, uh, give this kind of result. This is a severe dyst uh, dystonia. The, he has been looking towards the sky for the last seven years. He could not walk straight. And then we did a bilateral GPI listening and uh, immediately, you know, it's the first time he could walk straight and look straight. Uh, this is a drug in this dyskinesia in Parkinson's disease, very, very severe. And again, it's so severe bilateral. So we decided for a bilateral GPI listening with a similar technique and uh, immediately post up, you know, his uh, symptom improved and he could walk properly. And another case of dystonia where we did a young boy and we did a bilateral GPI listening. And immediately after surgery, he could walk properly. He was like this for the last five years. Uh, for essential tumor, uh, this patient had uh, Parkinson's and essential tumor. So uh, we had uh, uh, some problem here. So uh, this is uh, intraoperatively, we asked him to uh, draw and then he, this is like this and uh, immediately intraoperatively he could draw properly and this is and in this case uh, um, the this patient had uh, a, both gpi listening as well as vim vim thalamotomy uh, because uh, he had a lot of tremor so we had to add uh, from, you know lateral and medial to the internal capsule uh, uh, we, just one case we have done of uh, pallidothalamic tac listening in a patient with a DBS where the response was not that great. And uh, so that's the lesion uh, in bilateral PTT and that's the trajectory. And essential tremor is pretty easy, you know, but uh, because uh, VIM is a very safe area and you can make bigger lesion, you can, you know, if you don't find a best answer in the first lesion, most of the time we don't change, but then you can change uh, to other lesions, other places as well. So this lady had got a severe, you know, tremor. And uh, so this is the target of the VIM. And um, this is how the lesion looks like. And uh, the, the lady just before surgery and interoperatively, she is pretty fine. And essential tumor, you know, the uh, tumor stops like a magic on the table, just like this. Uh, about writer's cramp, you know, Scott Adams, very popular, you know, uh, 
uh, artist of uh, Dilbert, uh, who had um, a writer's cram and uh, was popularized. This disease was pro very popularized after he got this disease. He also has stammering. And um, so here, uh, the uh, pallidothalamic tract is um, uh, the uh, basal ganglia thalamus and motor cortex. So you make a lesion somewhere in, in uh, the BOA, BOP junction, like uh, in this case here. This is the target, and this is how the lesion looks like. And uh, these patients do pretty well. Uh, like right scram, this is pre-op, and that's post-op. And the musician's cram is exactly the same as a BOA, BOP, uh, junctional. And uh, so we asked them to, you know, uh, this is a professional musician. So he had a subtle problem, but then that was making, giving him a big trouble. So we asked him to, you know, play the model uh, during uh, surgery. And then once he was satisfied, we stopped it. And then uh, he went back to his job as a musician. This is one case of obsessive compulsive disorder that we have done. Uh, this patient took, uh, like, as you can see, it took him 18 minutes, sometime half an hour, and one time even five hours just to wear that shirt. And uh, uh, immediately after surgery, you know, he could wear, but for the result of OCD takes time uh, and uh, you have to assess the patients uh, better after three months. And that is, uh, we did an anterior cingulotomy and subcaudate tractotomy, about um, five lesions on each side with five on the track. So 50 lesions were made on area 24 and area 25. And we also have um, three cases of gelastatic seizure where we did radio frequency ablation uh, as um, you know, advised by uh, Kameyama, Professor Kameyama, and all three patients did extremely well. So this is a very, very nice way of treating hypothalamic hematoma. So this is our, you know, summary. So out of eight, eight cases of um, movement disorder, we did 70% uh, of our cases are uh, lesioning, whereas only, you know, 74% uh, are lesioning, 24% are and DBS, and this is the uh, Thing. And um, in listening, our uh, change in far margins score is 80%. So we are pretty happy with it. And um, if it's a Parkinson's disease, we most of the time do uh, unilateral. And then after three months, we do bilateral. But in uh, dystonia cases, we always go for a bilateral from the beginning or sometimes stays bilateral. And um, we have 10% of complication rate and uh, but not major complication. There's no death in our series. And there are a few patients who record like two patients of GPI listening uh, for PD record. And one patient were, had an infarction away from the lesion and um, became hemiplegic it's on the internal capsule. And uh, we presume that we have coagulated a perforator and uh, causing a distal you know, infarction, which is also published. So in my conclusion, um, uh, idiopathic dystonia, young patients less than 45 years old, a bilateral palatotomy in the first go, one size bigger, one size smaller, and you should monitor that during surgery. A disability tumor, uh, essential or, or PD unilateral VIM is enough. Young patient PD dopamine induced dyskinesia, staged bilateral palatotomy is best. And task specific dystonia is less than 60, a BOA, BOP junctional thalamotomy. And Parkinson's disease with marked uh, on and off phenomena, hypermotor symptoms, mainly hypermotor sy symptom is prominent. Then we do STM DBS. We medical professionals, you know, we really enjoy mystifying uh, science, mystifying medicine, and then trying to govern on that. And um, so, but I think we have to make it, if we want to go a long way, then we have to demystify medicine so that, you know, it becomes more uh, easily understandable to all of us so that we can do big things. Thank you very much. Thank you again, uh, Indian Pediatric Neurosurgical Society.
and thank you dr deepak for you know personally inviting me in this meeting thanks